Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika in with another edition of Politrix. I know y'all ain't think we forgot about it. Oh, no, we do the Politrix over here. Not politics, but Politrix. Because you can best believe it's going to be something go on that's going to make you realize the trick involved in the scheme, okay? The scheme itself, the whole course of the thing is a scheme. But I wanted to talk a little bit with you guys today about five things that you can take away from Gordon Sunderland's uh, bombshell testimony, okay? Now, the U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sunderland, changed the course of the House White of the House impeachment inquiry Wednesday over the span of several hours in front of the House Intelligence Committee with television cameras rolling for a global audience. In his opening statement, Sunderland connected with President Donald Trump directly to the quid pro quo trading Ukrainian investigations into Trump's political opponents for official actions and including a White House meeting. Sunderland explicitly stated that everyone was in the loop about what was going on with Ukraine foreign policy, implicating top Donald Trump officials, okay? Sunderland, a political appointee and hotel magnate with no background in government before joining the Trump administration, may have just given the Democrat the most damning evidence so far in the inquiry, okay? Now, Representative Schief, Adam Schief of California, who was the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, called Sunderland's testimony a seminal moment in our investigation. Five takeaways from his testimony, okay? Sunderland press, pressed Ukraine at Trump's direction. In his opening statements throughout his testimony, testimony Sunderland said that he was working uh, with Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, on Ukraine matters there at the express direction of the President of the United States. We did not want to work with Mr. Giuliani, Sunderland said, referring to himself, and Energy Secretary Rick Perry and former U.S. Special Envoy to the Ukraine, Kirk Volker. Simply put, we were playing the hand that we were dealt. Mm. Sunderland recounted several conversations between himself and Trump about the Ukraine opening uh, two investigations, one into uh, Burisma, a company where former Vice President Biden, uh, Joe Biden's son was on the board, and another one into the conspiracies about the Ukrainian meddling in the 2016 U.S. elections. Up to this point, a key Republican uh, argument had been that none of the witnesses spoke directly with Trump and that they offered secondhand information. However, Sunderland's testimony about many conversations he had with Trump on the matter are crucial to the Democrats countering that, that talking point. Now, while Sunderland said Trump had never expressed, expressly told him that the U.S. military system was contingent on Ukraine announcing investigation into this Burisma, uh, I may be uh, pronouncing that wrong, forgive me if I am, and the 2016 election, the ambassador said he was under the impression that absolutely it was contingent. Mm. Everybody knew about the quid pro quo. In turn, in clear terms, Sunderland confirmed all to, for all the, uh, to see that there was a quid pro quo with Ukraine that Trump withheld a white withheld a White House meeting until Ukraine launched investigation into the Bidens. I know that the members of this committee frequently frame these complicated issues in the form of a simple question as was there a quid pro quo? Sunderland said, as I testified previously, I agree I, in with regards to the requested White House call and the White House meeting that the answer was yes. Sunderland later said everyone was in the loop. It was no secret. Mm. These new comments corroborate testimony from other witnesses that contradict Trump, who has said all along and repeatedly Wednesday that there was no quid pro quo with Ukraine. But Sunderland didn't go as far as some other witnesses. He said Trump withheld the White House invitation from the new Ukrainian President Zelensky until Zelensky announced the investigations. Other witnesses testified that the U.S. military assistant was only was also a part of the quid pro quo. But Sunderland said Trump never mentioned the foreign aid component. Republicans have argued that Giuliani could have been running a shadow 
foreign policy without the involvement or knowledge of other senior White House or State Department officials. But Sunderland contradicted that several times in his testimony. He said everyone in the State Department was aware. He also implicated key White House officials, including President, Vice President Mike Pence, mm -hmm, Secretary of State Mike Pompado, and Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, who also directs the Office of Management and Budget. Sunderland testified that Pompo, Pompado was directly vocal to uh, was directing vocal to communicate with Giuliani even as of. September the 24th of this year. That's what he said. Look, we tried our best to fix the problem while keeping the State Department and National Security Council closely appraised of the challenges we were faced, Sunderland said. Sunderland also testified that he had told Pence that he had concerns that the delay in military aid had become tied to these, is these issues of investigations. Before Pence had a meeting with Zelensky in Warsaw, Poland on September 1st, implying that Pence was indeed aware of the investigations in the first place. These comments and emails that Sunderland described for the committee placed a new batch uh, of top Trump officials at the center of the scandal. In statements, Wednesday, representative for Pence and Perry disputed Sunderland's testimony and maintained that they did do anything wrong. Pompeo, a uh, spokeswoman, said some of Sunderland's comments about the Secretary of State were flat-out false. Under aggressive questioning from Democrats, Sunderland refused to say that he realized that Trump was asking Ukraine to investigate the uh, Biden. He wouldn't go there. Instead, he said he knew that Trump and Giuliani wanted Zelensky to probe Burisma. With 2020 hindsight, now that we have the transcript of the call, the Bidens were clearly mentioned on the call, Sunderland said, referring to Trump's 20, July 25th call to Zelensky. Well, he mentioned the Bidens by name. But I wasn't making the connection with the Bidens, he said. He later said a lot of people did not make the connection between Burisma and the Bidens. Volker and Trump, former special envoy for Ukraine, gave similar testimonies on Tuesday. But it's difficult to take Sunderland's explanation at face value. While uh, Burisma was being um, discussed, Giuliani went on TV and posted online about the need to investigate Biden. Sunderland said he didn't see any of that. The explanation requires viewers to believe that Sunderland never asked Trump why he cared so much about the random energy company in the Ukraine. The investigations were really about politics. During, now that, we done went through two. We're on the third one, okay? First one is splitting hairs over Biden versus the Burisma. First thing, second, first thing I want you to take into account, Sunderland implicated Pence, Pompeo, and Mulvaney during his testimony, okay? So now we are going to talk about the investigations were really about politics. During the hearing, Sunderland undercut a key Trump defense, uh, defense and simultaneously confirmed that the whistleblower complaint that triggered the impeachment inquiry. Zelensky had to announce the investigation, Sunderland said, referring to probes into Biden's family and the 2016 election. He didn't actually have to do them as I understood it. Legal experts have told uh, CNN that this is a critical distinction. Okay. Most legitimate investigations are done in secret. So as not to tip off the supposed criminal, but the intense focus on securing a public announcement from Zelensky demonstrates that the scheme was really designed to maximize the political benefit to Trump instead of good faith effort uh, to investigate corruption. Whether he meant it or not, Sunderland confirmed that the whistleblower complaint, which said Trump requests for investigations, were meant to help his campaign. Trump has argued that he asked for the pros because he wanted to clean up corruption in the Ukraine. But there's no evidence of wrongdoing or corruption by the Bidens in Ukraine. Man, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. This man really, that Sunderland, that, 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 that particular uh, testimony is going to weigh heavily. 
more and more we're finding out how corrupt Donald Trump and his crew is actually his his administration. Let me speak correctly. We're finding out more and more how corrupt this man is truly is, truly is. And my thing is this: I said it once, and I'll say it again. This man sole purpose is trying to run this country as if it's a business and not thinking about the constitution which was in place to make sure that politics ran smoothly. Do I think that this impeachment inquiry will pass the house? Yeah, it will, but it's going to stall out at that Senate. He will be impeached at the house, but it's not going to is he going to face any charges when it hit the Senate? No. Will he be removed? No. Because I keep telling y'all, no matter what we find out, you have to remember, the Republican Party is a party that is not going to go down in history with their name corrupted like this by this president. They know that he is a bumbling idiot, but they are going to protect him. Right now, they're exposing him left and right. They giving the Democrats everything they want. And since the Democrats run the House, the impeachment inquiry will move on to the Senate. That's where it's gonna stall out at. Because they're not going to they're not gonna remove him nor charge him. They can't have that kind of look on the Republican Party. If that is too many child I call them good old boys, that is just not gonna take a fall or a hit to the United States. Uh to, in the United States like that. They're not going to allow their party to have that type of blemish on their uh, record. Okay? They're going to protect him simply because he does what they want them to do in some instances. And he probably is the face. He like They like him as the face. He say what they can't or won't be able to say. And they like that. I don't see this man getting impeached. That's the basic thing I want y'all to remember. But I don't want you to sleep on the fact he is guilty of what he's being charged with. He committed a crime. But he is not going to be removed from office. If he do, then child, I will get on this camera and I will get on camera and say I was wrong. But I don't see it happening. They're not going to remove him from office. So everybody's thinking that he's going to be removed. Yeah, it look bad for him right now. And we know the Democrats in the House going to eat him up. But when that thing moves over to the Senate, it's going to take a turn. Because they're going to protect their own. I told you, the House is ran by the Democrats. The Senate is ran by the Republicans. They're not going to take a hit to their party like that. They just simply are not. But they are fully aware that this man has violated uh, the laws of the land. They know he committed a crime. They know his ass need to be impeached out their seat. But they're not going to blemish their party's name. They're going to cover him when he gets to, when this gets to the Senate phase. So enjoy the humiliation that he's going through right now. But don't get your hopes up. Everybody, don't get your hopes up. Now, I just gave you a little snippet of what CNN was offering. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I was watching that particular uh, station as I watched the impeachment uh, hearings. And I wanted to come back and talk to you guys a little bit about it. I just don't see him being impeached, even though everything that's piling up against him says that that's what should happen. The Republicans is not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Now, they might wait for, his, for him to get out of office and hit him with some charges, especially up there with New York. And Rudy, I don't know if you know it or not, but you in danger, boy. All your, you, better get, you better secure you some counsel <laughs> because don't think Donald Trump won't throw you completely under the bus before he takes too big of a fall. Anyway, y'all, I was just on a, a break here, and I wanted to come in and discuss this a little bit with you guys because I hadn't had a chance to come down and through and talk to you about this type of stuff. But let me know, do y'all do y'all now believe, well, or did you always believe that he was corrupt? Do you think he has broken a law? Do you think he needs to be impeached? I am yes to all of that. But I want to hear from opposing sides. Tell me what you think, if anybody watches me, that does not see it the way I see it. And, and tell me, do you think that this man will eventually, when the impeachment inquiry meets, reaches the Senate phase, that's where it's going to stall out and they're going to go to protecting him. I'm telling you, they're not going to remove him out of, he will not, he will not be removed from office.
We're going to have to deal with him until the end of his um his tenure. Now, I think this really does a, does a lot to him getting uh as far as him having a chance at re-election. Yeah. I think he can pretty much say no. Nah. But Donald going to do everything he can to make sure that he don't go down and his party going to make sure of it with him. What a sad day it is in this world when the was supposed to be the most powerful, one of the most powerful countries in the world. The superpower of superpower is being globally embarrassed by the idiotic shenanigans of an ill-equipped president. I hope people sit back and really think about what you voted into office and how this looks on the outside. We are more and more becoming a laughing stock. I have never been more embarrassed than more embarrassed than I am this day and age when I encounter people from other countries because the way they look at us now, they didn't look at us like that just a few short years ago. And say what you want. You might have felt like Obama ain't do what he was supposed to do, but one thing about it, he was a professional, he was a politician, and he knew what to do. Now, did he get the support that he needed to make some of the things he would have liked to have seen come to fruition come to fruition? No, he didn't. But he damn sure did never embarrass us like this. He had tact, class, and and he, he knew his stuff. That's something we know Donald Trump does not. Anyway, that's it. That's all. I just wanted to throw that out there. I'll link the article for you can go read the entire article for yourself down in the pinned comments and weigh in down below in the panel section. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on all of this. And remember, greatness never come from comfort zone. In the meantime, in between time, like the video. It gets me recognized on the YouTube street. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already for the free 99. Press your notification bell and set it to all so that each and every time I drop a pre-recorded video or go live from this channel, you will be notified and you can come over and join in the conversation. Have a great remainder to your Thursday. I will see you guys on the next upload. Peace.